right. future yeah. material people to use. Right. Cool, yeah. yeah. So that's the standard 221 is what you do for the suturing. Now that was a basic interrupter suture that I just done there, but we'll go through there after. So that is the best way to do that. And Olivia? Yeah. Do you mind doing that again, please? Because of my technological problems. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Here's the snaps. Video part. <laughs> Failed everything. <laughs> so you have to use the three. Hold the thread with your hands. Yes, because you're going to have sterile gloves on. So I often will use it. So you're going to have your sterile gloves on because it's a sterile procedure. So you're not going to mind yourself if we don't use the full set. No, no, no. Often, so you, so when you go in, so we'll do a basic interrupted suture again, which I'm going to go through in a second. Just go over the knot tie. Will, so, it be, will it be one of these that we do it on for the assessment? Uh, what did I do last year? It is something like this. It's oh, not a pig. It's not it's, a pig. No, it's not. <laughs> okay. So I will always hold the thread with my hand, like this. Yeah, because that's what I do. Yep. And remember, so you go... Now, the other thing you need to remember is not do it too tightly, because what happens is you can't open it up when you try to get the other end to hold it. So you just go quite loosely and you go twice clockwise round, pull together. This is cracking me though, that's a big one. Yeah, it's gonna hold that. Thanks. Anti clockwise twice. So that's the other thing with the bigger sizes is it does that, whereas you'll find with the four I won't do it as much. So that is what a knot tie is. You can go anti-clockwise first twice and then clockwise first and then it doesn't matter what way you do it, you just do two, two, one. And that gives you good wound closure. You'll find that often on a big gaping wound like that you might need to come and do a big suture like this and the wound edges might not come quite close together so that can be your like landing suture and you can do that and then come back and start you should always I mean people say different things but you should really start if it's a really big wound do one big suture in the middle and then start at one end and you can always take the big one yeah, out later. Yeah, take the big one out later and that will give you the wound ed the edges together but also give you an approximate make sure that, that it's going to heal properly together, like it's going to be the same length apart. Because often what you do sometimes, if you don't do that big landing suture, is you start at one end, go to suture, and then you get to the other end, and then, shit, if it it's puckered. Did. Yeah, it hasn't come together properly. So often putting in a big wound, but when you've got a little wound, it doesn't make any difference. They only need two or three sutures. So that's your knot tie. Um, now we're going to talk about the interrupted sutures, which is what I just done there. Those are the main types of suture that we use. I very rarely use the other types, but um, interrupted is the main type that you're going to use. Um, one, because it's basic. One, second, because it actually brings the wound edges together well. And also, especially in jagged, crushed wounds that are quite, not just a straight line, you can only do really interrupted sutures because to try and do any of the others is just too impossible. So with an interrupted suture, the best thing to do, you always need to gently inspect the wound. So make sure you can't see any tendons, muscle, bone, anything like that. Like I say, if you can see any muscle or bone, then you need to get someone more senior to have a look and then maybe needs orthopedic follow-up. Um, you need to stabilise your hook with your forceps. Now the, the, the key with entering, you always need to have it perpendicular and have it at a 90 degree angle. Problem is if you don't do that is you don't get deep into the subcutaneous tissue. So if I just went like this, it's quite superficial isn't it? And that's not going to, that's going to rip and that's not going to hold it together. You need to go at a 90 degree angle and that gets you a much deeper bite. Okay, you should generally People do it differently, so I learned generally that you should be about half a centimetre 
you know, about there to a centimetre away. But now that I've got better at it, you can actually, the skin's actually really tight. And the skin does hold as long as you do a deep bite. So really best practice is about 0.3 to 0.5 millimetres away from the wound edge at a 90 degree angle and going deep into that subcutaneous tissue. Now there's two ways of doing this. You can do it in two steps, a single um, throw or a double throw. So the single throw is probably for people that are uh, sutures that are wounds that are probably a bit more shallower and for people that are a bit more expert but if you're just new at it the best thing to do is do a double throw and what I mean by that is going through the wound and then coming out through the middle okay and then getting your bit all to get your um, suture material all ready again and locked up and then holding the edge going in at the same 90 degree angle in the same area and then coming out. Now the reason they say to do this is one, you get a deeper cut and two it's a little bit easier to do and wounds are often bloody, you don't often, you know they're not always easy like this, they're often a wee bit jagged um, and you've got subcutaneous tissue pouring out that again sometimes you can cut. So have you guys seen those wounds that where the subcutaneous tissue is coming out of the wound because of, you know, distortion, edema, just cut it off. There shouldn't be, I mean, again, inspect, but there shouldn't be any arteries or tendons or anything in the subcutaneous tissue. Cut it and get it out of there. It's going to be localised, they're not going to feel it, and it's going to make the wound come back together. It's not going to do any different to the patient. It's harder to um, remove the, those, the double oh, I do a single, I do a straight through, unless it's a really big wound. When you take them out, oh no, no different. different. They're exactly the same when you remove them because it's the same suit type of suture. Yeah. So see how that was quite deep. So that's quite good. And then again, you just do your two, two, one knot. And the good thing about this is it's not going to tie. Can I put my weed on? But sometimes if this happens, it's okay that it gets a bit loose, it's not a big deal, because on your second knot, you should get it. Second knot's your Yeah. The other thing with the knots is you need to have them all on the one side. Okay? You right? Yeah. Oh. No, no. Um, you need to have them all on one side. Because it's not really for our benefit, it's for the benefit at the... It's pretty. At the, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> you got to make it pretty. And the benefit for the person at the other end. Because what happens is often these are, big ones are kept in for 14 days and the skin overgrows, you get scabs. But often you can't find them. And so if you put the knots either side, people will think, oh, there's not a suture there. Oh, that's okay. And then you've got a suture left in there. So you, that's the reason why you should have the knots on the same side. Right, now I've got a wee video before we get on to mattress and um, vertical mattress. <coughs>